Good morning, Chesity War Eagles. My name is Hunter Crabtree, and uh, this is this week's announcements for you. If any of you are interested in work-based learning, please speak with Ms. Howard uh, about all the information you need on that. Now, instead of playing that annoying video that we play every time, let's jump to Fernando Garcia, who got the lucky opportunity to talk to some of the coaches about this soccer season. So what am I expecting from this season? I'm expecting two standpoints that we focus on since we started, fun and development. Make sure the girls are not only having fun playing the beautiful game, but also developing each day and improving one day at a time as a team. We have three goals that we set last year. The first one being to improve one day at a time. The second one is to make the GHSA soccer tournament. And also the last one is to become a family. Well, I've been telling them since day one, we're gonna take it one day at a time. That's the first goal. Uh, we're not really uh, going to be concerned about what's gonna happen tomorrow. We're gonna focus on today and we know uh, with COVID, we have protocols in place that we've been trying our best uh, to implement, and hopefully the season can work out. Um, we're hoping that the team will come in and just be ready to play. A lot of the guys were kind of sad last year when the season got cut short, and they're excited about getting back onto the field. We think that we have a good side and can make it back to the state tournament this year if everybody stays healthy and just plays the best soccer they can play. The specific goals that we have, obviously, are always to you know, try to win region and uh, make it back to the tournament. Make it back to the state tournament is the first goal. Region is even just even better. Across the board, we're challenging our kids just to get 1% better each day, be better today than you were yesterday. As far as COVID affecting us this year, clearly we want to make sure that everybody stays healthy so we don't have to contact trace and just keep everybody away from each other. Wash your hands, wear your mask, all those kind of things. As far as playing atmosphere, we're excited because we found out that we, since we're outdoors, we can have 40% capacity, which means all of our fans that have come in the past can continue to come and see us and support us. Go to GoFan, get those tickets, come out and support our 21 seniors across the program, girls and boys. See you guys soon. Well, there's going to be lots of sports going on next week, so let's just go ahead and take a look at them all. Starting off that Tuesday of next week, there will be a soccer game at 5.30 versus Gainesville. There's also going to be a tennis game at 4 o'clock versus West Hall. On Wednesday, there's also going to be a varsity game at 5.55 versus Habersham Central. Now, moving on to Friday, there will be a soccer game versus West Hall at 5.30. During that, at 5.55, your Varsity War Eagle baseball game versus Cherokee Bluff at 5.55. Now, jumping off the sports topic, why don't we cut to Jack Kennedy with this weekend's weather. Hello, Chester T. Today... Except Friday, light showers, high of 44, low of 38. Chance of rain, you can expect 63%. Saturday, showers, high of 42, low of 37. Chance of rain, 65%. Sunday, cloudy, high of 47, low of 35. Chance of rain, 25%. Thanks, Chester T. I'm Jack. This is Best Weather Man, out. Since Sunday is going to be Valentine's Day, we got a team going around and asking some of you what your favorite pickup lines are. So uh, let's see what some of you came up with. Um, hey, Jarman, do you got a Valentine? Um, what's your cheesiest pickup line you got? All right, so we're here with Jarnamo. Jarnamo, do you have a Valentine? Yes. Uh, what's the best pickup line you got? <laughs> are you from Tennessee? Because you're only 10 I see. <laughs> All right, I'm here with Nate. Hey, Nate, what's your favorite pickup line? My favorite pickup line? Mmm. Oh, are you a parking ticket? Because you got fine ran all over it. Mmm, that was smooth. What is it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, the best pickup line you got then? What are the you best? I don't have a pickup. Stop the cap. All right, so I'm here with Walker. Walker, what's the best pickup line you got? I wish I was cross side so I could see you twice. That's it. All right, so here with Mr. McIntyre. Mr. McIntyre, what's the best pickup line you got? Uh, best pickup line was, um, are you tired? Because you've been running through my mind all day. We're going to do the best pickup line. You ready? There's like 20 letters of the alphabet, and you say the 20, 25. Hi. Uh, what you use? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you call the uh -huh. That's a pickup line. Yeah, that's a pickup line. Yeah. All right, the best pickup line you got then? What are the best, I don't have a pickup line. Jordan, what's the best pickup line you got? All right, is, uh, is your dad a beaver? Because... Damn, you're fine. As most of you know, this week is going to be the second week of Black History Month. And, uh, you know, there's been a multitude of people throughout American history who have helped shape, uh, you know, the America that we know and live in to 
today. Rosa Parks is one of those figures. And uh, Edwin and Estevan got to go around and they asked some people about, uh, about her in general. So why don't we see what they did about that? As you may know, we're in the second week of February. And for this week, we're going to be honoring Rosa Parks for Black History Month. And so we went around asking students what they knew about her and how she helped make a difference. Uh, Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat to a white man on a bus, and I think this uh, inspired like, boycotts afterwards for uh, bus services. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. So Rosa Parks was a civil rights activist who protested by taking a seat in the front of the bus, and this helped in the civil rights movement by beginning the Montgomery bus boycott in which thousands of protesters sat in the front seats of buses instead of sitting in the back. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Uh, Rosa Parks is best known for a civil rights moment when she got on a bus coming home from a long day at work and she was told to move to the back of the bus and she wouldn't do it. Uh, she was tired and she just didn't move. She says, I shouldn't have to. I think it was a catalyst and it drew attention. I mean, it made na national news at that time because, you know, she was African-American and um, in the segregationist policies in the South, it was, hey, this is something that's still happening, even, even in the 1950s and 60s, and it drew attention to it and just really, really ignited a lot of people to rally even further around uh, the civil rights movement of the 60s. Right, thank you for your time. Oh, you're welcome. Hey, um, for Rosa Parks, I believe she was in, in some sort of domestic service in, um, I think, I think it was Montgomery, Alabama, although I could be wrong. Um, but she, um, the black people had to sit in the back of the bus and she did not feel that that was right and there was no seats. And so she wanted to take a seat toward the front of the bus and the gentleman who was sitting there would not let her have a seat. Although that would have been the gentlemanly thing to do. And she did sit down, but um, she was told to get up and she refused. And I believe that she was taken to jail for that. So she inadvertently became one of the early heroes of the civil rights movement because she stood up for her rights. Although she did it in a way that was nonviolent. Um, it was a form of nonviolent protest. And she, like, she became a rallying point. And other people started standing up for their rights as well so that they were not you know, taken for granted or mistreated and that they became treated equally as anyone else you know, would have wanted. Um, she was a quiet woman, um, but a very dignified woman, and she was a, a champion of civil rights, although I don't think she intentionally did that, but she knew what was right, and she was willing to stand up, and even if she were to be persecuted for her beliefs, she was willing to undergo that because everyone should be treated equally. Thank you for your time. Thanks for joining in. Back to you, Hunter. And that'll be all for this week. I hope everybody has an amazing, safe weekend. Uh, and remember, go War Eagles. And Jason, next week when you're recording, make sure you get a good night's rest beforehand. We don't want you falling asleep on set, buddy. Mm -hmm.